Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are well. Today we're going to look at Redshift environment and useful tips about fog and volumetric lighting. Let's go! First, let's go over the basics on how to create foggy environment. To create fog or volumetric lighting, you will need to add a Redshift environment into the scene. This will represent the medium, and then you just need to add a light that will pass through that medium. In the previous version, you needed to turn on the volume contribution scale on your light. This is no longer the case and it is on by default. If in doubt, just check your light settings under the details, contribution, volume. Let's go to our first example, volumetric lights. Let's click on the Redshift environment and go over the settings available. First, we have a tint, a global tint for all volumetric lighting effect except global fog. Fog gets affected differently and it's illuminated by itself. The next we have scattering. Scattering defines strength of the volumetric lighting. Higher values will generate brighter volumetric lighting and vice versa. If you enable volumetric scattering and you get a completely washed out white frame, you may need to reduce this setting significantly. Attenuation controls both thickness of the fog and attenuation of the light as it passes through the medium. Phase When the value is zero, light will bounce around the medium. While it is greater than zero, produce what is known as a forward scattering. Forward scattering means the lighting is mostly visible when traveling towards the camera, while negative numbers will produce backward scattering, which means the volumetric lighting will mostly be visible as it travels away from the camera. Now, knowing how to control volumetric lighting in our scene, let's look at our light and specifically the feature called spread. By default, the spread is at value 1, which lets the light bounce around the medium, while 0 is being really narrow and sharp looking light, almost like a midday desert sun. With the basics behind us, let's look at a couple use cases uh, of a Redshift environment in real projects. So let's slow down a little and I prepared a couple examples for us to go through. Let's start with this uh, volumetric lights guard rays. I've created area light. I created a cloner object that uh, the light will go through this grid. The first thing we would need to do, we would change the spread uh, on that area light that is behind the object. We will change the spread to like, uh, I don't know, 0.2 maybe even less 0 0.6, 0 0.06, oh. So now you can see, uh, we can start to see some uh, guard rays uh, happening. So we can go uh, very low at this. A lot of people don't know, or at least I didn't know when I started, it, that you can, you go to material util utilities and bring in noise volume. You can apply this material straight to redshift environment and that will affect all the noise and we can, we can just, Take this noise away, bring in maximum noise, which will offer more noise types and just plug it back into, not to the surface, but plug it back as a volume. And now if I look at it and I increase the contrast on this, you see what is happening. You see those little kind of empty, empty spots I was creating. So if I increase the overall scale, you can see it even more. And this will give that real kind of foggy type effect in your scenes. So applying noise volume material, uh, you can apply any material basically, and then you just need to open it, open shader graph, just remove everything. And then you plug noise into the volume, then apply it to reshoot environment and you will get these um, you will get these patches of noise just coming Good through. The thing that I forgot to mention is that we can animate the noise using the Maxon noise node. So let's move on to our next example. The next example is this scene. We want to create fog that is stronger at the bottom, at the ground, and then gradually goes into transparency mode. If you've seen my video in the, uh, in the past, um, I was actually doing this using fog cards, which is essentially plain with the material that is uh, transparent on one side and then gray on the, the other side, so using ramp. And I've recently done this uh, again because uh, it, it, it bothered me that I don't know how to do it properly. So I've done this using Redshift environment and this is what you see basically. If I turn it off, it's basically looking like that. So let's uh, bring in another Redshift environment and just do it ourselves. So I'm just gonna bring in Redshift environment and it goes completely white. So I'm just gonna reduce the scattering to zero and bring in our fog, just gray one. And then I'll bring in our height. And now you, you see nothing happens because our attenuation, our thickness, I would say, adds zero. So we need to increase our attenuation and you see the fog 
immediately comes in. This is important uh, parameter to really activate the fog. And now we need to bring height quite a lot of up. This will be always dependent on the size of your scene. So I will go for 3000 because I already know that it works for me. And now my whole scene just went gray and, and that's great because now I can really dial it in. I can change attenuation and I can get back some of the light. So what I like is to tip of that rock, just be, you know, contrasty and visible and everything else was just kind of covered. So I'm just going to change the light. I'm going to pick some of that blue from our scene and just get that kind of a gray, gray, blue combo. Yeah, something like that. This is really looking cool. And now I just can bring more attenuations. So we set the emission color and the fog will start illuminate itself based on that emission color. Uh, camera exposure compensation, I would leave this uh, on and Redshift strongly recommends to leave this option on because it's very uh, difficult to dial the numbers in if you don't leave this on. Now the height, it's really dependent on your scene. So uh, I've really find out it always takes some time to fine tune these. And then horizon blur is for you know people that have very thick fog and maybe they, they want to blur it down. The fog is being... Uh, problematic at the horizon and being very contrasty, like a sharp line, then you can blur it down. The transform effects control the fog where it's going to sit within your scene. Change the numbers. You can go minus, right? You can rotate it. So you could have your fog come in from a side, just entering the scene, right? And just kind of entering the environment like that. Okay. In our next scene, we have a robot and multiple area lights that we will now affect by inserting environment. And you can see these lights are now volumetric. So we can definitely reduce the scattering. I'm just going to shift it a little bit this way. And we can apply material to the redshift environment, open it up. And what we can see is we can delete this material and we can bring in state node. State node can bring different data from our scene and we looking particularly for a ray position so we're going to output ray position into vector to scalar so we need to convert this data the vector position to scalar and we're going to output the z because in our state node there is multiple transform space option and you can use like world and we're going to use our camera so it will use our camera to output z depth into and now we're just gonna use our range so we're gonna change range and i'm gonna output z into input of the change range and change the range to something like ten thousand. all this uh, goes to adrian from redshift um, like respect to him for showing this technique because this is just incredible uh what he always come up with so ramp we're gonna plug it into ramp so this new range in the change range, we change it to zero to 10,000. And then in this new range, we will control with the ramp and we're going to output it into our volume. And as you can see, there's already change happening and I can control with this ramp now uh, completely the way the volume is affecting the scene. So I can bring the volume strength. I can even make it that I can copy this black one so I can make it that it will only be working in this range. So now we need to be careful because we changed the range. Very little movements can do a lot of, lot of work. So now you see with the ramp, I'm controlling the environment fog uh, or the volumetric lighting, how it will affect our scene depending on camera Z depth. So I can just move this slider and just kind of remove volumetrics from our scene completely. So if I push this a little bit further, so you see, I can completely reduce it. So now I can use this slider to kind of bring in lights. And I, I thought it's very cool. So I, I definitely wanted to share that with you in, in this uh, tutorial as well. What, what you can do, you can uh, change transform space to world and you can control stuff like uh, height of that fog. So instead of Z depth, you go world Y axis. And then again, I'm just going to need to find out. I swear to God, I saw it. Maybe we can change range to something like 2000. 
and now you can see um, I can control it's very I see I, I got it here so now I can control volumetrics with my RAM top to bottom which I found as well uh, super interesting using uh, using notes uh, from our scene um, uh, e extracting data from our scene and basically using that to affect a certain part of the scene uh, it might be useful uh, down the line so I'm sure you can come up with the use case for it uh, I'm sure I will yep so this was another example and the last example is this creative lighting uh, I, I I'm sure you've seen many tutorials on this kind of on this Blade Runner effect, I like to just play with it. You can just really just play with the scattering and, and you can dial different different kind of effects um, as you go. So you can change the face position and it will really change the direction of that. Uh, I'm only using one area light and you can, you can change the attenuation to really uh, bring in. So if I put attenuation like really low so light can pass through freely and then the face fully then i can get these crazy effects uh, of uh, robot being super overexposed but again um, it's uh, just for your creative looks and this is the way uh, you can play with the environment and you can really you can fine tune you know or you can just turn the face the opposite direction and you can reveal the building behind the robot if I can look at this scene, right, so you can achieve different looks with with the environment and yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found something useful and um, I'm really, I like to make these. I, I know I was sounding jittery and it was probably hard to follow, but it was a difficult topic for me to cover, but I wanted to share all these things at the same time because uh, I was looking for different tutorials from all over the places, all different years, and I just kind of tried to bring all this together into one tutorial. So hopefully this was at least a little bit useful and see you in the next one. And also, please follow the Adrian's uh, YouTube channel. Adrian is, um, he works at Redshift and he, he maintains the Redshift forum. And he has a YouTube channel with all these useful tutorials where I also learned the RS state node um, technique. So just go and give him some laugh on his YouTube channel if that makes sense. I mean, anyway, see you in the next one.